Let me go on now and give you one other set of things to think about. And that's five different genres of authenticity. Five different ways to appeal to authenticity that you can use to now begin thinking about how you redesign your offerings and your interactions with patients and with your clients to be able to get them to perceive you as authentic. The first genre of authenticity is natural authenticity. Natural authenticity, we tend to perceive as authentic that which comes in or out of the earth, untouched by human hands, not artificial or synthetic. Natural authenticity, think about the rise of organic food and companies like Whole Food. It's all about being pesticide free and not harming the environment and how we're, we're, we're going to take things out of the ground that are as natural as possible. In fact, one of the, the products I recently got at Whole Foods was this uh, Big Tree Farms handcrafted Balinese sea salt. I mean, think about how, how this is rendered authentic by the natural materials that it has, by the story where it talks about how, how Balinese sea salt has been handcrafted in Bali for generations, and right? all of it letting it to be naturally authentic, natural authenticity. Second genre of authenticity is original authenticity. We tend to perceive as authentic that which is original, that's never been done before, unseen by human eyes, not a copy or an imitation. Think here about anything that comes out of the fertile mind of Steve Jobs, whether it's his original iPod, his brand extensions that bring that down to a new form factor, right, or new technology that can revolutionize its particular industry. Original. There's only one company in the world, you look at this stuff, you know immediately who produced it because of how original it is. Not just physical goods, but anything can be original. Think about one of the shows right here at the Venetian. Think about the Blue Man Group. Right? How original are they? If you've never seen these three fellows, you need to go to Blue Man Group and see it and see what originality of experience also entails. The third genre of authenticity is exceptional authenticity. Exceptional authenticity, we tend to perceive as authentic that which is is, is done with genuine care, that treats us as an exception, not the same thing for everybody, not disingenuously performed. Here I think about uh, this company here. This is actually a doorknob from Ritz Carlton in Naples, Florida. When they were redesigning the rooms and getting rid of actual physical keys and putting in the key card system, they got rid of all the doorknobs. Rather than just throwing them away, they sent out an email and they sent out letters to, to people who had stayed at the particular Ritz-Carlton and they um, said, tell us the story of your Ritz-Carlton experience and if we like it, we'll send you one of these doorknobs. Well, this particular doorknob actually was sent to someone who had never stayed at the Ritz-Carlton Naples before they made this change, but emailed them and said, if you send me one, I'll tell hundreds and thousands of people about it. <laughs> And you think about Ritz-Carlton, where Ritz-Carlton treats every single guest as an exception, where it customizes down to every single guest, has a profile in over a million different guests remembering exactly what their preferences are. So the next time they come, they can presciently, without them even having to ask, design that hotel experience around exactly what they need by fulfilling those individual preferences. That's exceptional authenticity. The fourth genre of authenticity is referential authenticity. We tend to perceive as authentic that which refers to something that is authentic. Think about referential authenticity, it actually came from a, a TV show that my, my partner Jim Gilmore saw and, and, and pointed out to me on, I think it was on the Travel Channel or Discovery Channel, you know, one of, those, one of those sorts of channels, that in fact was on this very city that was on Las Vegas. It was an hour long show and they were interviewing all these man in the street interviews about what do you like about Las, Las Vegas? And multiple times, people say, oh, I love Las Vegas because it's real. <laughs> not once, not twice, not three times. Many times, people kept talking about how real Las Vegas is. Now, being observers of what's going on, didn't just dismiss that and, and say, okay, well, these guys are yokums, you know, from the sticks, but recognize why do they do that? Why do they think Las Vegas is real? Well, for the most part, it is because these are people who will never get to experience the real Paris, the real Venice, perhaps not even the real New York, New York. And this gives them a taste of that and allows them to think of what that might be. And for them, it may not be real, real up there, 
but it has this level of authenticity. I mean, that's what they're reacting to. Think about this particular place that we're in right now. Right? This is an actual uh, mask from Venice. Right? From the handcraft, it says right on here, handcrafted, made in Italy in Venezia. Of course, I bought it here at the Venetian. So I'm not sure how real that is, but think about the Venetian. Right? The Venetian is completely and totally fake, right? It's not the real Venice. But the real Venice isn't authentic either. The real Venice is a complete and total fake. The real Venice, we only perceive it to be authentic because it refers back to its referential to the Venice of the 13th and 14th centuries. You go to Venice and it's artificially kept above water. The Campanile burned down in 1902 right there in St. Mark's Square. And they rebuilt an exact replica exactly like it was before because they want everybody to perceive it as authentic. It's artificially kept in the past. It's not a real city. But it's a wonderful city. It's a city that people love because it exudes referential authenticity. Then finally, there's influential authenticity. We tend to perceive as authentic that which calls us to a higher goal or gives our life meaning, that, that influences the world or influences ourselves for the better, that's not inconsequential or without meaning. Think about Starbucks again and how Starbucks has for years worked with individual farmers in various developing countries, helped them improve their businesses. One of the first to accept the, the tenets of fair trade coffee. And there's a little story on this about uh, 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 a good coffee doing good, about how it's influencing, how it's affecting those farmers. Right? That's influential authenticity that it wants you to, to read about and feel when you go into its stores. In fact, one of the ways that you know that something's appealing to influential authenticity is if it has what I call, if it's described by what I call a three-word offering. A three-word offering, fair trade coffee, dolphin safe tuna, free range chicken, conflict free diamond, all of those are influentially authentic.